so as Mike says, uh, I am uh, working work for the CBA on the, a project called the Local Heritage Engagement Network. Um, we're a project which is set up specifically with the remit of um, getting local groups, getting individuals who are interested in archaeology to be more engaged with and feel more capable to do advocacy. Um, and so uh, it's really useful to come to an event like this where we are put into the context of a fantastic um, body, been around for 40 years, and has been um, on the front lines of campaigning for and being an advocate for the archaeology sector and the archaeology of this region um, in the past decades. And so really brilliant to be set up by Ben's talk, which leads precisely from um, some of those uh, strands of what this society and others like it have done in the past to what they might be able to do in the next 40 years and beyond um, in terms of making sure that archaeology is protected, making sure that there are resources for it to be investigated and to make sure that um, it can be enjoyed by as many people as possible. So um, to start with a statement, the CBA believes, and it's a particular central strand of this project, that um, archaeology is important to local people and because of that people need to be seen as a core stakeholder and must express that value um, to those who make decisions about um, and affecting the future of, of, of archaeology. Um, and so this, this I believe is very true that, that local voluntary groups are a crucial part of local decision making when it comes to archaeology and how that happens. Um, so some people may express this through um, taking every, every opportunity they can to invest in a, a specific process like the planning system, watching for uh, sites that come up through the planning system, commenting on those sites through the mechanisms that are available. Um, some may campaign to raise a particular issue to prominence. Um, Mike Novell was talking about some industrial archaeology projects this morning that kind of fit into that mould. Um, Others simply may take the opportunity to use the democratic processes that exist to raise their voice about the issues that matter to them by speaking to their local councillors or their local um, um, MPs. So in addition to the local voluntary groups being a crucial part of decision making, I think that there is some kind of advocacy that you can do no matter what your involvement um, in or interest in archaeology is. Um, and it's just about finding what that avenue is for you. So um, this is a um, spectrum that I've created. Disagree with it if you like. It, what it does is to set out um, an interest in archaeology down in this bottom left-hand corner up to um, influence in how this process is managed. So you, you've got your private and accent actions down the bottom, your public actions up on the top. I'm sorry I haven't updated it um, with a picture of our new Prime Minister, but there's also less funny clip art available of, of Theresa May at the moment, so we <laughs> stuck with David, David Cameron being given a headache. Um, and you can find where you, where you sit on this um, spectrum, largely as an individual or as a local group. Um, do you run lectures or walks or put on exhibitions? Do you volunteer at a museum or at a, um, a local community site? And what I want people to think about is how they can take something that they already do, a um, bit of community archaeology, and move themselves further to the top right-hand side of this graph. And this is what I think the, the central interest in, in thinking about how, you can, how we can do more advocacy as a community sector. Um, pick, a, pick one, anyone. Being a member of a local group, being a member of an active local group. So for mass, that might mean thinking about what the strategic priorities are for this group to raise the profile of archaeology. Does it have um, a strategy for getting into the local media? The stories that could be generated, are they, are they pushed out in the right places to get that influence and impact? Um, do you publish results? 
And how do you disseminate those results, not just to the people who have the interest, but to the people who are the decision makers, who might not know about the archaeology, who might not really have an interest in the archaeology, but what they should have an interest in is the fact that there are a large number of people in their communities that do have that interest themselves. And you can go from anywhere on this board to anywhere on this board. Have concerns, the broadest one on the, on the spectrum possibly, you can make that an advocacy action simply by communicating those concerns to your local representatives. Do you go on a lecture or a walk or do you run them? And do you invite your local MP to attend those walks with you? These are the kinds of actions that um, we can all look at in our involvement in archaeology. So, okay, if there are things that we can do, um, why should we? Why does archaeology, uh, why does advocacy matter to archaeology and why should I care um, so I gather you've had some of this context yesterday um, and today in fact we've talked about uh, the development of historic environment records and what they do for archaeology what they enable um, we talked a little bit yesterday about the specialist advisors that exist to um, give advice through these processes whether through planning or through museums um, or through the Portable Antiquity Scheme, as we, some of us heard over lunchtime. Um, and other uh, avenues for, for engagement that are sometimes present in local authorities, the likes of um, outreach for education, um, things like historic landscape characterisation projects, all of these kinds of um, avenues which have the potential to engage people and use the resources of the uh, local groups like Mass to um, create benefits for um, the historic environment and the enjoyment for the people um, who are interested in it. Um, we've talked in, in some broad mention about some of the threats that existed in the past and how Merseyside Archaeological Society was involved with those. And we're coming around again, I think, to an era where those similar threats are, are, in, are, are, are on us, are upon us. So we have changes to the planning process which are um, fundamentally altering the processes that we rely on to do archaeology. Um, these these the potentially threatening the system that we put in place in 1989, um, 1990 rather, um, that's allowed us to uh, enjoy such a, a boom time for archaeology in the planning system. It's nearly eight years, is it, Mike, since Merseyside lost their um, curatorial services um, in late 2000s. Um, you've got them back now, but other parts of the country, um, well, you were, you're leaders in setting these things up, but you're also leaders in losing them, and now the rest of the country is catching back up. Lancashire being the case in point, I'm going to have a slide on that in a second, um, but these things will come back round again, and are coming back round again more across the country. Um, Erosion in capacity, even if you don't lose your service, there, there's less and less money supporting these services with less and less capacity to do things. Um, because of that, there's greater isolation between those services. And there's no longer the ability to uh, have effective joined up working. All of these are threats that we're currently facing, um, to which a stalwart local group um, should have an interest in working out what their role is to be in standing up against these threats and coming up with solutions for the future. Um, okay, so this is a tricky context, I'm not going to lie. It's not straightforward to say um, we need to be supporting these services as they've always been. We all know that local authorities are in a dire position financially themselves, such that it is not an easy thing to say you must support your um, local archaeology, county archaeologists, um, whoever it might be that may be a threat um, and so um, it's, not, it's not, a, not a necessarily an easy thing for people to stand up for when they know that they're going to lose um, teaching assistance in their local schools nonetheless um, there are things that we can do um, to make sure that we're not seen as a soft target something that nobody cares about something that there are no consequences to cutting um, and to see the whereabouts do um, local voices fit into this and for me I think there are 
three or four different ways that you can um, conceive of your own role as, as people who are interested in archaeology um, at the grassroots level. And that's by raising profile of the things that you d both do and the things that you care about, building networks with other people like yourselves so that you have a groundswell of support um, to show those in power what um, an interest this is for, for so many people. Um, and also building those networks with the professionals themselves and with the decision makers. Um, both learning to understand and engage with the processes that are, that are available to you. For instance, the complexities of the planning process, such as it is and such as it might be. Um, and indeed by effecting change where there is the opportunity to do so through direct engagement when there are decisions being made about the future of the planning process or um, of your uh, local provisions at a local level. Okay, so this is showing an ideal situation where you fit into the process. Um, you can disagree with the model slightly, but I think broadly it um, tells you what, it, what it's, um, is optimum. And that by building networks and raising the profile of heritage, you prime decision makers to recognize the impact of their decisions. So that when there is a threat, um, change can be affected, which is most beneficial. Of course, that doesn't always happen. Um, and campaigning is a big part of advocacy. But what I want to say is that campaigning doesn't have to be what advocacy is about. And I know that when I speak to rooms of people like this, campaigning isn't what they want to do. What they want to do is do the stuff. Um, and I understand that. But there are lots of ways that you can do the stuff um, and also feed into a process that makes this campaigning less likely to be necessary. So here's your case in point. Five Lancashire museums closed Friday last week. Um, this is, again, it's a complex issue. This is not to say that had better networks have been in place, had we shouted louder, we would have definitely prevented this. But what we may have been able to do is prevent the way that decision came about. Five museums, Holmshaw Mill, Queen Street Mill among them, um, millions of pounds worth of HLF money gone into them over the last few years, uh, closed almost in the blink of an eye, with no consultation, no... Um, opportunity for public outcry until the decision was already made, it's too late. What we could affect if we work um, to preempt these issues, because we know that they're happening across the country, is to get ahead of this decision, to convince decision makers that it's not an easy decision just to cut, cut these services because it's better than some of the alternatives, and to get them to put in place systems which would mitigate the harm. For example, a longer process by which, um, through which you could consult on um, an effective and sustainable transference of these services to a viable museums trust. We haven't had that, so these museums are now closed, closed for the foreseeable future while the council now investigates how they're going to be held in the future. At the same time, the county has lost its um, HER service to being currently fulfilled on a voluntary basis by the former county archaeologist. These are things that are happening in this region at the moment to which um, people who are interested in archaeology almost certainly have concerns but also certainly have an opportunity to um, be involved in the process. Okay, so advocacy is difficult. I'm not going to lie to anybody. Um, you probably all have read about Old Oswestry Hill Fort in the news over the last few years. This is a site um, of international significance. Um, I don't think that much is doubted, is doubted by anybody involved. Um, the site, um, a, a, one of the fields adjacent to the, to the scheduled monument, has been included in Shropshire's strategic land allocation for housing, um, stimulated a huge local response um, that this is going to damage the setting of the ancient monument, set a terrible precedent for expansion of the town, um, and has led to an uh, enormous, well-organised campaign that's had national coverage. Um, but it's an intractable solution. Three years down the line, there's no uh, sign that um, the decision from the council can be, will now be changed. More, le uh, more levels le left to be fought on. 
um, when an eventual planning application comes forward on that site, I'm sure. But it's not easy, despite being an innovative campaign, despite having huge public support and passionate arguments, they haven't been able to affect change here. Um, this example is from Sheffield. Uh, it was a, um, an application to demolish an unlisted row of um, buildings called, on Devonshire Street. Um, lots of well-loved local shops on this street, but also very interesting vernacular architecture, not of national significance according to English heritage, um, but well-loved in the community, certainly of local heritage value. Um, a campaign group was formed, it got huge support, they were really innovative in the way they approached local businesses, that they built their case for the value, the heritage value of these sites. Um, they couldn't overturn the decision in the planning process. They took it to um, a judicial review and lost, and lost a lot of money. Um, it's difficult. So that just reinforces how important it is not to be um, on the back foot to know what potential you have to prevent these, these issues coming up in the future um, or at least make, those, make the processes of campaigning as easy as possible when you get them. So what can we accomplish? Um, it's a common concern for many people. They feel like a lone voice. They feel like they've left it too late. They don't know what they can accomplish. But um, it is possible to highlight the importance of archaeology and heritage um, in a way that they may not be recognised by many people who are involved in making these decisions, whether that be um, deciding which site goes into a local plan or um, deciding which service gets its budget cut um, in a round of um, budget negotiations. It's possible to stimulate media interest, not just necessarily in the crisis, but in the great things that is, are done by archaeology. Yes, we already do this, but are we conscious when we do it that we're linking the good news stories, the celebrations of what we do, with the potential to prevent things like um, Old Oswald Street or the closure of Lancashire Museums happening um, in the area that you're doing this work in. Um, it's possible to lay the groundwork for communications, to know who your heritage champion is, to have a dialogue with them about what it is you do and why it's important that you're facilitated to do that by your local HER officer, by your county archaeologist, by your um, local finds liaison officer. Um, the more that you can raise awareness of the processes and their value to those people who make the decisions, um, the less likely it is that they will sit silently in their seats, be it in Parliament or the local council, when an item comes up to cut the budget of the historic environment record, for instance. Um, and it is possible to uh, seek new and innovative ways of doing things through volunteerism, through community participation, particularly the likes of a, of a big, well-organised um, society like Mass. Um, there are absolutely ways that groups like yourselves are engaging with councils across the country to um, be involved in these processes and raise the profile of archaeology and heritage more generally. Um, so an example, um, two examples really, uh, one from Nottingham as the initial seed. Um, Nottingham have a heritage strategy published in tw late 2014, early 2015. Um, this wasn't the result of local campaigning, it has to be said. It was a result of the City Council realising that if they have a proper heritage strategy for the city, they're much more likely to be able to lever in millions of pounds worth of HLF money, which is a good thing as far as they're concerned. Um, it's a brilliant strategy. There are um, really kind of great um, mechanisms for uh, 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 building up networks through local volunteers and um, local groups that are interested in doing projects, groups that are currently doing projects. Um, it's, it's really useful and I, if, you're, if you have any interest I suggest that you go and pick up a copy and have a read. Um, that's what some of the people in Sheffield did. They read this document and decided that they wanted one for Sheffield. So as we speak, um, Sheffield is going through a um, really quite brilliant campaign to get their city council to um, commit to something similar to this. 
They've created a joined up heritage group by networking with everywhere across the city that's a tourist attraction, uh, that's some, done a conservation project that does community archaeology, um, and they have um, built a fabulous case for why heritage is important to Sheffield. Currently, there's not a lot of space given in the local plan to heritage in Sheffield. There's a lot of um, concern that they let this resource go to waste. Um, it's uh, going to be tricky. They're not, they've not had an instantly warm welcome, but they are doing um, such fantastic campaigning work. They're getting such good profile for the issues that they're interested in that you could say that um, they've got a fair chance of, of getting some action. Um, and if not, they've still created a fantastic campaign network for um, if something ever does go wrong. And so we're back to the spectrum. Um, maybe with a couple of ideas about where you are um, and maybe with a few more new ideas of what you could do. Um, and in the last few minutes, I have a few ideas. At a easy level, a basic level, um, we're referring to speaking up. Just speaking up um, in whatever way is easy for you, whatever way is available for you. Um, so what do you need? You need to get some background information on the threats. You need an opportunity to write to or go and see your local representative to share your concerns or your ideas. Um, or if you're again talking about this, this group, thinking about new processes that you could put in place, taking examples from elsewhere in the country and thinking about how you could work with local authorities to increase their capacity or add value to the services that they currently fund. Um, you can ask them questions, you can challenge them to do more. So with regard to your MP, you can um, ask them whether they're a member of the, the all-party parliamentary archaeology group, where they can get information about national issues affecting archaeology because it's a concern of their constituents. I think if you're pressured in the right way by a passionate group of citizens, many MPs would say, yeah, I can do that. I'll join this all-party group and they'll have a better context from which to make decisions about archaeology in the future. And you can form a, form a network with others. Jill informs me that you were talking yesterday a lot about what you can do as a group um, to, to work with others whether it's your local civic societies, whether it's the smaller affiliate societies, um, what can this organisation do as a hub in the region um, for stimulating this kind of action? Um, we talked about reactive campaigning and how difficult it is, but um, it's, uh, it, it is something that, that does need to be done. Sometimes it's necessary. In the 70s and the 80s, um, we had a much more activist base for archaeology in the rescue era when it was necessary to go out and um, s use your trowel in the five minutes you've got before the bulldozer cuts through it. And we, through that process over two decades, um, developed a, a, a robust system of legislation. If there are similar challenges today, we need a similar response. Um, okay, this is just an example of a resource that you might find. It's from campaignstrategy.org. Chris Rose is an environmental campaigner of several decades worth of experience. Um, and what's fascinating about him is he tends to win his campaigns. Um, and he's got loads of brilliant advice, dead simple, that um, should engage you um, as an individual or as a local group to feel better able to, to go out and, and do something. And there's proactive campaigning. As I say, this is hard work. There are constraints and frustrations. It may take a process of years. Um, you may have to commit to doing something yourself. We talk about localism or volunteerism or added, out, um, added value. Um, these are things which are um, driving forward the debate on local services and how these services are going to be delivered in future and a proactive local group will be thinking now about what it is that they could do to make sure that the situation is positive in the future, whatever um, model we end up with for dealing with archaeology. Um, know your arguments inside out, fairly obvious, organise, strategise, network. And importantly, in order to get that knowledge and to know your arguments, 
there's plenty of guidance on how to do it. The Local Heritage Engagement Network has toolkits on its website um, on how to engage with some of these processes. Um, if there's something that isn't there, ask us, because you're not going to be the only person who wants it. We'll investigate it, we'll research it, we'll do it for you and put that toolkit up for other people um, to use. But then it's not just us. Historic England, lots of technical information available. Um, Civic Voice, another example of a group that puts out fantastic information. And more than that, if you don't know where to go, drop us an email because we're here to um, point you in the right direction of where you might get the information that you need, where you might have a question about how you start a campaign or get involved with a particular process. You're not going to be the first group to have done it, whatever it is you want to do. And we can hopefully put you in touch with another group that's several steps ahead of you in the process. Just to make it just that bit easier to work out what's possible. Um, and finally, uh, I've gone around and dropped some postcards on your chairs um, uh, at the break. Pick them up and have a look. We've come up with this pledge. This is essentially the very base, most basic of levels um, for you to decide, I am going to um, raise my voice and send this postcard to my local decision makers to ask them um, whether they will sign up, sign up, um, there's no register or anything at the moment, to these three simple um, pledges. I'll value the local heritage that makes my local area special. I'll speak up for fair archaeological protections in the planning system. And I will champion the role of government to celebrate and encourage the appreciation of archaeology and heritage in, across the UK. Nothing too political, nothing too challenging. On the, on the back, this is where the important bit comes. You put down why it's important to you, why they should listen to you, their constituent or their ward member, um, and why archaeology needs to be in their thinking, um, in their, whatever their work is. Send it to them, ask them to send you a response, to post a picture of the pledge. This is one way among many to get involved. And if you want to write a letter, staple it to the card and send it in. If you just want to tweet a picture of the card, we've all been here today standing outside a fantastic resource as a community group. Um, tweet your MP at the end of the day. I've got a few minutes of questions while you're bored. Tweet your MP the picture of the card that's on your desk and say, this is what we're doing today. Merseyside Archaeological Society is 40 years old. Isn't that brilliant, Mr. MP? Who's the MP for Liverpool, for here? Who's, who's your MP? Well, that's true, that's very true. But um, whoever he is, she is, send them the tweet. Um, and please take down our details, because as, as, as we say, we're a service here that we want to provide information for you. We um, want to put you in contact with others who could help you. Um, so please do get in touch. Thanks.